Let me just read from the Bible. If if you have your Bibles, I'd like to. I've got I've got two sermons basically, but I can't preach both of them, or we'll be here for a couple of hours, which most of you don't mind going going for that long. Um, so I love you, Chris. I love you. He's excited. Okay, so um, but just you know, like I had something ready, and then I got kind of sidetracked this morning, and. I don't know, it's just crazy life, isn't it, So that we have. But um, um, if you have your Bibles, turn to 1 Corinthians in chapter 12. And I'll preach oh, this thought, I think. Uh, chapter 12, 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 12. We'll start reading from verse 12. So if Paul can get that up. Sorry, I should have given that to you earlier, Paul. Um, I'll just start reading and then he'll catch me up, I'm sure. Um, For as the body is one and has many members, but all the members of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. For by one spirit we were all baptized into one body. Whether Jews or Greeks, whether slaves or free, and have all been made to drink into one spirit. That fan's blowing my stuff around. Okay, there you go. For in fact, the body is not one member, but many members. If the foot should say, because I am not the hand, not a hand, I am not of the body. Is it therefore not of the body? And if the ear should say, because I am not an eye, I am not of the body, is, there, uh, is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where would be the hearing? If the whole were hearing, where would be the smelling? But now God has set the members, each one of them, in the body just as he is pleased. And if, uh, and if they were all one member where would the body be but now indeed there are many members yet one body and the eye cannot say to the hand I have no need of you nor again the head of the to the feet I have no need of you so much rather those members of the body which seem to be weaker are necessary and those members of the body which we think to be less honorable on these we bestow greater honor and our unreasonable parts were greater modi- with greater modesty. But our presentable parts have no need. But God composed, uh, composed uh, the body, having given greater honor to that part which it lacks. That there should be no schism in the body, but that the members should have the same care for one another. And if one member suffers, all members suffer uh, with it. Or if one member is honored, all members rejoice with it. And you are the body of Christ and members individually. It's a great passage of scripture. And um, as we all know, (laughs) it's relating to our physical bodies. But he's actually referring to the church. Right? In one of those verses, he actually says that he puts members in the body as it pleases him. And I, I've always found it very interesting over the years as a pastor where God takes people and, and all of a sudden they show up at our church. I remember talking to Rob and he was saying that for about eight months they were looking for a church to go to. And he would go to this church and he'd go there for three or four weeks and then he'd leave that one and he'd go to this other church and then he'd stay there for a couple of weeks and he'd check it out and then he'd go to this church and go to that church and all, all of a sudden he comes to this church. How long ago? Two years ago? Peace, brother. Peace. Um, and so a couple years ago. And, I'm, I'm, and it's, like, it's like all of a sudden he just goes, well, this is it. And, and it's always amazed me that people will find our church, come to our church, 
And it's like all of a sudden they go, yeah, this, this, is, this is home. I feel like I kind of fit in here. And, and to me, I almost, I, I have this feeling like that verse of scripture that kind of I read this morning is it's like that's God actually orchestrating that. God orchestrated that. God kind of took that person and said, I'm going to put that person in that individual. We know it's, it's the body of Christ is all out there. And it's, but you, you know, some of us just don't fit into some of those ones out there. Because you are very peculiar kind of people. <laughs> hey, that was scriptural, wasn't it? But just somehow, some of us just kind of go, you know what, I, I think this is the one. And equally with that, I find it interesting how people will come for a season in their life. And it's okay if they have to move on, if they feel they need to move on. I'm not saying that, you know. But, but what is interesting is that they'll, they'll actually say, you know, well, God's leading me somewhere else. So it's okay, no problem. That's, that's fine. I, I release you. <laughs> you know, it's okay. You're not mine anyhow. You don't belong to me. You belong to him. But but I do do have another sense, and that is this: that that I don't I don't think God is is that hickly pickly. That's a strange word to use, wasn't it? Statement to make. I, I don't think he's like, well, okay, I've I've had enough with you here. I'm going to just take you over here. Because when you when you go to a church for a season, for 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 a season, right? What happens is that you begin to click in that place. Now, now, you might not always agree with everything and you might not always like everyone in that church, whatever the case is, and you might not like certain aspects of our church service and it might be different to something else that you've grown up in or you've been a part of. How many of you know we can be all different? Yeah? Yeah? We are, as he says in that passage of scripture, we are all individuals, individuals of the same body. Correct? But we are individuals. We're unique within ourselves. We have our own giftings. We have our own ministries. We have our own talents. We have our own, own ways of doing things. But as anybody, as he's saying there, he says, but you can't say because I'm the ear... I'm not a part of the body. Because the ear is just as important as the nose for the smelling. And the nose is just as important as the mouth. And on and on and on and it goes, right? The hand is just as important as the foot. But I'm the foot because I, I walk everywhere. I, 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 I uphold the body. No, no, you're not as even more important than the hand or anything else. And when one suffers in the body, we all kind of suffer. Have you ever smashed your thumb? Have you ever hurt some part of your body? Did you, did you know it affects the whole body? Right? Man, if I, if I hit my thumb and cut myself, it affects the whole body. I feel it through my whole body. My wife has just got this new training machine. She's watching TV SN. And I'm from now on I'm forbidding her to watch TV <laughs> SN. It's a television station where you can buy stuff online, right? <laughs> Dangerous. Not for her, but probably for no, but it is it. It's so so it's this machine and you sit down and you can you can sit there only for a minute. You just need to do this a minute a day. <laughs> you do this thing like that, and it's just done. And you do this other thing like that, and it's just supposed to really help your pelvis. I don't know. So it's pretty, pretty, pretty cool. So she got it the other day. She goes, man, I love, how does that girl do that for so long? Because I'm hurting already. 
the parts of the body are hurting already and it affects the whole body. You got a back problem? How many of you know that affects you? Right? Because something is wrong with the body. When something's wrong with the body, it, it, it just, it makes everything else just not work properly. And you might think as a part of this body, well, I'm not really that important. I just come along. I go to prayer meetings sometimes or I do this or I do that. I'm not in the music team. I'm not in this. I'm not involved in that. I'm just, I just come here on a Sunday and I like the people and I don't mind that guy up on the f stage there sometimes. Whatever the case may be. Let me tell you something. When you are actually missing, th there's something about that that really does you're out of your place. It's, it's interesting. As a pastor of a church for many, many years, when people leave or when people are missing, and they can be missing because they're sick. They can be missing for all kinds of reasons. It actually does have, it, it has some kind of impact upon the church. Whether we realize it or not, we, we don't think sometimes that it actually does make much of a, a, a problem. It's not much of a problem. But it actually really is. Because without you, we stop being His body on the earth. Without you joining together and, 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 and being together, we actually stop being, I believe, what God's actually probably called us to be. You, you, you get that? Ah. Ow. Can I borrow your guitar, Steve? Where are you? No, just not nah, fun. That speaker likes to ring on me. I'll move over. You good? No, I got that. Yeah. You want to hear a song? Nah, I don't want to sing a song. <laughs> Is this right? Right way around? Hey, hey, I'm free. I'm free to do whatever I want. I'm free to play the guitar this way if I want to. Am I free? Yes. Yeah, I'm free. Of course I'm free. And play this guitar however I want to play this guitar. But nothing's going to happen with it being this way. It just it isn't going to work. Is it? It's not going to work. Should I do it this way? Should I do it that way? Yeah, absolutely. Again, I'm, 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 I, I'm, it, you ha whatever I want to do, I, I'm free to choose to play this guitar or not to play this guitar. What's interesting is that each one of these strings has been connected to this guitar. You got six strings, they're all connected. All right? Now, the owner of the guitar, he put the strings on, right? And he connects them to the other strings, and he puts them in order where they should be. Why is that? So it can function. So it can make music. Right? So it can be harmonious, make melody, make songs up. So you can do something with it that is going to make the proper noise. What happens if I turn this, these keys, these strings out of tune? I'm not going to do it because it's really hard to get it back in tune. But if one of those strings, let me just say this, if one of those strings is out of tune and I try to play a 
a chord, what's happening? Doesn't sound right, does it? It's not harmonious, it's not clicking together, it's not making the music that we want it to make. So it has to be connected, has to be in tune. Have you ever been out of tune? Huh? Yeah. We get out of tune. We get out of tune with stuff. We get out of tune with one another. We get out of tune with the church, the body. You know? And so, so is that why we move on? Or is God trying to get us back in tune? Because he's the owner of the guitar. Would you agree? He's the one who keeps us in tune. And you know what? When you get out of tune, if you stay out of tune for long enough, it, it just, you know, but if you let him retune you in, guess what happens? You become in tune with the rest of the guitar. That's what I want. I want to be in tune with the whole guitar so that we can be in harmony and melody and we can praise and worship God together and serve Him together. It's like the hand. Now when I come to playing, this is, this, these are just some illustrations about the body of Christ, right? Now I can play this. How, you like that? What do you think of that song? No, I didn't quite like it myself, to tell you the truth. But you know what? My fingers, I, I need to be, if I'm going to play this right, first of all, that has to be in tune. It has to be all the strings connected. Has to be together to work properly. But now as I come, as the body come together, I've got to be able to use that hand and that hand also together. Those fingers and those fingers have to work together to make the music. Now I'm free with that hand and I'm free with that hand and I'm free with those fingers and I'm free with those fingers to do whatever I want to do. I don't, I don't have to play in tune. I don't have to play the chords properly. I don't have to do any of that. But if I want things to be right, I need to actually, yeah, that probably should be plugged in, shouldn't it? Don't know. But we, be, we, we need to actually be able to strum it right. To make it sound right. Amen? If I'm missing a finger, makes it hard to play the guitar. Right? Not impossible. It just makes it hard. I have to readjust to try to play. <laughs> I'm not even going to try. Right? I have to actually put those fingers together. I have to actually play chords. I have to put them together properly. I have to be able to strum the guitar properly. All of that has to be in unison and be together to make this work together. That's why every single part of you, every single one of us, who God has actually put together, I didn't put you in this place. I didn't send you here. 
somehow you came here. Right? It's like Rob was telling me. He's wandering all over the countryside. But he stopped here. He felt connected here. You know? And, and, and I understand if you don't feel connected. But I think it's important to try to feel connected and be connected. And stay in tune. Amen? Because there's something about that that makes everything work properly the way Christ has wanted it to work. Amen. Do you believe that? Yes. Amen. Um, what I love about this, everything about this, is this. Is that we are all, and I've been saying this for a while, we are all on our own individual journey with Christ. We're all on, a, on our own individual journey. We're all, but we're also on a journey together. So, as a pastor, I'm just trying to make it work. Yeah. That's all I'm trying to do. I'm just trying to make this journey work for all of us. That's why when we first talked about having to shift and move, I kind of said to everybody, I said, listen, I said, here's some options. The options are we could have church at home. Could have home church on a Sunday morning. People came back and said, listen, that's just going to break us all up. We don't want to be broken up. We want to stay together. We want to come together as a church. Okay, option number one. Out the door it goes. Right? Correct? So what's, what's option two? Option two is find another church building. So we went on the hunt for another building. We looked here, we looked there, we looked here, we looked there. Everything was going to be more expensive than staying here, even though they were going to up our rent by double. And the reason why we were leaving is because the rent went up. So we can't stay. I, I feel, feel that that would be unwise and, and being not a good steward of God's finances, right? So we need to move. So anything that we looked at seemed to be just expensive, just seemed to be over the top, and just didn't feel right. We found a couple of church buildings, but it meant that we would have to probably go and have church either on a Saturday afternoon or, 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 or a Sunday afternoon because those churches are already being used by an, another congregation. Yeah. So, oh, man, okay, so... Option number three is, guys, we can go to another church building, but it's going to be in the afternoon. And everybody goes, uh. Okay. Um, but we're staying together. Uh, very hard to make it right. So we, you know what I did? Can I just tell you what I did at that moment? I threw up my hands. I said, over to you. I mean, in the beginning, it was over to him anyhow. But I did a double over to you. Okay, your job. Not my job your job to sort this out. So all of a sudden, I kind of I kind of feel like I was Joshua, you know, leading the people into the promised land. And the first city we come to is this city called Jericho. Big wall, we can't permit we can't get into it. We're not going to move it. We're not going to do anything. And yet I'm saying, God, you know, this, this is up to you. you you've got to make this happen. If that's what everybody wants, your body 
not my body, your body, if that's what your body wants to do, then, then you'll have to orchestrate this. You'll have to make it happen. You okay with that? So as we, as we get closer to that time and, and uh, as we're starting to kind of work all this out, I have a few sleepless nights because I'm having to learn to trust God. I'm having to learn to obey God. I'm having to kind of walk where He wants me to walk and do what He wants me to do. You know, just like you. Yeah? I feel like I'm there and then I get these instructions. I want you to walk around this city. One day, every day, I mean, not literally, I'm just talking about Joshua now, okay? But I kind of feel the same is, is going on. I'm not sure where we're going to go. I'm not sure what we're going to do. I'm not sure how it's all going to work out. But you know what? I just need to follow God's instructions. Correct? I need to just do what He's saying to do and what He's orchestrating to do. So I will follow you. I will obey you. I will trust you in this. So I want you to go around the city one day, every day, for seven days. Right. And I want you to tell all the people, don't talk about it. Zip it. Don't say anything. Don't, don't. You know, sometimes the best thing to do in a change is don't say anything at all. Don't make up conversations, what you think is right, what you think is best, where you think, it should, how it should happen. Just zip it. I think that's why God told them all to just say nothing at all. Now, now I don't know about you, but if I was the people of God, and if I was Joshua, I would have lots of questions on that, on that issue. Would you? I don't think this is the right thing to do. This is, this is crazy. Walk around a city. And then on the seventh day, I want you to walk around seven times. And at the end of it, still keep it quiet. Don't say anything. Don't, don't. On the seventh day day on the seventh march around the city, I want you to shout praises to God. That's all I want you to do. Just shout victory of the Lord. Shout the praises of God. Just give Him all the glory and all the honor. Can you say amen? amen. And what did God do? He brought a victory to those people that they could never bring within themselves Amen. that was God's orchestrating yeah. that was God moving that was God doing what he was doing in that place and for that for his body that was his body amen yeah. and all they had to do was what follow just do it just march along we don't understand. I don't know. I think Joshua's crazy. But we're just going to march along. We're going to learn to trust. We're going to learn to obey. We're going to learn to just do whatever you are asking us to do, Jesus. Amen. Amen? Yeah. And then God was able to go before them, provide for them, and get ahead of them and do all the orchestrating, do all the things that was needed to do to bring about this victory. And I believe that God does those things over and over and over again. In my experience of all these years of pastoring, starting churches in Papua New Guinea, pastoring churches in Sydney and Melbourne and Perth here over the years, everything that I've ever done it seems like he's always asked me just to trust and obey. And you'd think that I would have learned that by now. And I'm getting better.
But that's the walk that he's called us all to. Would you agree? He's called us just to trust and obey. Just follow. Just go. Just, just stay connected. Amen? Stay connected to this instrument. Stay connected to God's purpose for your life. I know it's individual, but it's also a part of the body. These fingers here are all individuals. Right? But they're only... But they are a part of this hand. And this hand is an individual hand, but it's a part of this arm. Which is a part of the body. Right? And they're a part of this whole complex being that as it works together, something happens. When those strings are played together, when there are chords being played on those strings, there's music that flows from that. That actually begins to happen to make music and to make it all sound right. And there's always this connection and this harm harmony. You know what? When you're, when you're in that place, I think it's just so important for all of that. I, I absolutely love God working and moving. And I, I don't always... The journey's not always enjoyable, challenging sometimes, confusing sometimes, but at the, at the most, it actually is so rewarding in the end when you see everything that He's done. And He proves Himself to you over and over and over again. And when He does that, I just go, man, He's so real. You know, you, you have to say, oh, uh, how do you know God is real? Uh, if I could just take you on my journey with me, and you can see all the times that he's intervened, he's orchestrated this, he's done that, he's done this, he's opened the door here, he's opened the door there, he's answered that prayer for him and for me. For instance, when we found that building, I, I just thought, I'm going to go down and see Alan. He's been a friend of mine for years. I went down to see him. He's the owner of this building. He doesn't use the building anymore himself personally. Although he does, actually, in bits and pieces. He has other little ministries. But most his ministry is mainly overseas. And so this connection is like, okay, I'll just go down and see him. I'll go down and have a chat to him. So I got a hold of him. And he, he was like, yep, yep, come and talk to me. Come and see me. Yep, no problem. And everything I asked him, I said, listen, can we use the building? Yes. Okay. Uh, what do you need from us? Nothing. Just move in. How much is the rent? Oh, great. No problem. I like that rent. He says, I like that rent too. That's enough? That'll provide for us? And then he says these words. He says, you have been an answer to our prayers. <laughs> Your prayer? I said, but but no 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 no. You've been an answer to our prayer. No 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 no. You've been an answer to our prayer. So it's like God's hearing our prayer. God's hearing His prayer, and He goes, you know what? I'll just orchestrate this and make this happen together. Like, I didn't do that. I didn't make that happen. I'm not, I'm not that clever. I know you all think that I am. But I'm just not that good. But He is that good. He loves the mission field. I love the mission field. You know, like, like we're just, you know, like all the connections there. The next thing that goes along is, okay, we've got a building. He's got everything that we need there. We're going to take some of our stuff with us. But we don't need these chairs anymore. They were given to us. God helped us, bless us with those a number of years ago. We've carried them around on our backs for years now. Um, I don't want to carry them around anymore. 
He's got chairs. He's got everything there. We just move in. Happy. So Claire, can you please put these chairs on Marketplace? So she puts them on Marketplace. She gets little pieces here. Ladies saying, people saying, oh, can I have a couple chairs here and a couple chairs there, a couple chairs there. And I said, no, we just want the chairs to go all together. So a guy comes together, and we met him last Sunday. He came to our church service. He walks in here, so we asked him to come. And he looks at the chairs, and he goes, these are perfect. What he's doing is he's renovated some multi-billionaire guy I think has bought the old Signet movie theater in, in Como. Renovated it completely and because it's heritage listed you can't, you've got to try to keep it all back to where it was from, from before. So he starts to show me some chairs. They're going to buy these incredibly looking beautiful chairs but they're on back order and they probably won't come for about eight or nine months right so he goes but in the meantime we want to open up the sig old signet movie theater and start showing old movies and doing all this kind of stuff and we we you know like so we need chairs and these just how many of you know the timing of God is really cool really, really cool and he goes, these are perfect. And he shows me some chairs that he already is using in the place, right? And they're the same blue color as this, and they look almost identical to this. Like, no. Yeah, yes. And he says, I will take all of them. And I said, you can have all of them. Thank you, Jesus. So tomorrow morning, he's coming to pick them up. And then he says, on top of that, he says, we're going to have a showing for your church specifically, a movie at the place when we get it all sorted out. And then he says, then I'm going to have a showing, also another showing. I'm going to raise some money and I'm going to give you some of the money. I said, that'll be great. I won't say no to that. Oh, thank you, Michael. Thank you. Yes? I didn't orchestrate that. Claire did. No, the Lord did. Amen? Yeah. All I'm trying to say, and then, and then one night, I didn't have a very sleepful night because I'm thinking, I've got two shipping containers out the back. One is the church's. So it's going to be used for the church's storage and stuff like that. But it's full of clothes from the op shop. The other container belongs to me. And, but where am I going to put them? I, you know, I don't want to impose upon Tim again, which I have in the past. Cody's uncle. Maybe I could, but I wasn't going to try to go there. So I, I went back and I spoke to Alan at the new building, the owner of the new building, right? That we're going to move to. I go to him and I say, listen, I said, I got these two containers. He says, I love containers. <laughs> you love containers? Yes. Can I put them on? Yes, put them on the property. There's a spot right there and there. Go ahead. All, all I'm trying to say is that God has already gone before us. All we have to do is trust and obey. Honestly. That's all it is. You know, learning to basically trust and obey. And then when you do that, you just go, wow. Look at what you've done already for us. The clothes in the shipping container. Claire, she's my go-to girl, okay? She posts free clothes. Come and get them. 
on Marketplace. She gets all these phone calls. And then Saturday morning? No, what morning? Thursday morning. Thursday morning, I walk up and you're like, oh, by the way. Oh, by the way, I forgot to tell her that, that, that some guy is taking the whole, whole, whole batch. But he can't take them until February, but that's okay. He's going to take all the clothes. Because the people that were calling up Claire saying, oh yeah, I'll, I'll take some clothes, would come here and walk into the container and go, uh, yeah, I just want a couple of bags. I want them all to go. Again, God's gone before us. Can you say amen? amen. It's just, just... So I'm just so excited about what God's doing. Amen. And there's a reason for us going to this new place. I don't know all the reasons why. I don't know all the answers. I don't have all the answers. But there has to be a reason. Because I didn't orchestrate this. He did. Amen? How are you guys going out there? I think so. I'll drink some water. I'm just really excited about what God's doing. It's a change. Some of us don't like change. Some of us don't like moving. But um, our challenge is like that. But you know, you know, I think it was Jesse who was telling me. I think we, we were talking a couple weeks ago. It's okay, I'm not picking on you. And uh, I was saying, oh yeah, we're going to have church in the afternoon. And he goes, oh, that's great. Be great. It means I can go to another church in the morning and then come to our church in the afternoon. Did you say that to me? Yeah. So, if, all of you that like double church on a Sunday? Whatever. Do you know what? I, I, I'm expecting good things. Amen? Good things for what God's going to do. Amen. Any questions? Can I say something very briefly? Yep. Can I say no? No, no, I'm just joking. I'd never say no to you, Paul. Oh, thank you. I felt there was something that happened today that I needed to share um, because I really think it fits in with what's happening at the moment. I've been thinking about you know, things that have been in the past and things that are coming, on, uh, coming up. And uh, uh, there was recently a, uh, something I shared in the um, worship group chat where um, somebody had said something very praising of me and I said, look, you know, I haven't always been the person you see today. Um, I've uh, been not a nice person in my past. Anyway, today Claire said something along the positive lines again and I again went back with something along the lines of the, the negative of my past. And she said, the past I don't know. I don't know your past. And as she said that, I realised she was speaking for God. We have a God of our future, not of our past. God has forgotten our past. We look forward to a fantastic future. Amen. Amen. All good? Okay. Let's call it a day. Yes. Sorry? Next Sunday? Three o'clock in the afternoon. Okay? So we'll crank the AC up and see how we go. Hopefully it's not as hot as today. But that's fine. Yep. Why is it Sarah that always asks the questions? Yeah, go. Yeah, just a dinner instead, once a month. Yep. All good? Thank you. Many good, many good. Well, let's stand. Why don't we just stand and just... Um, 
We don't normally do this, but why don't you just join the hands of those people next to you, even across the aisles? So why don't we just join hands real quick right now? Just as a, as an, uh, a thing of unity and whatever else. Join hands with those around you. And um, let's just pray. Amen. If anybody has, has a word from the Lord or anything like that or has something to say, that's fine. Just speak it out. But let's just pray right now as we close. Father, we come to you. We thank you that we can be one in your body. This is your body, Lord. This is what you're doing. No man is orchestrating this, but you're, you're, this is your leading. This is your guiding. This is your purpose. This is your plan for us individually, but also as a body. And so we join together, Lord, with you and in you. We join together for your purposes and your, your will to be done in our hearts and in our lives and in this body. As you please, as it pleases you you, you, you join us together, you connect us together so that we can actually be the instrument of your use, the instrument of your use. And we just ask for your favor, your goodness, your grace, just to continue to go before us and bless us. And help us, God, in everything that is done in front of us, Lord. We thank you because the best is yet to come. It really is. The best is yet to come. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. And we give you all the honor in the name of Jesus. Amen. And amen.